Hi there, my name is Evan, and I'm the designer of Grotto Beasts. In this video, I'll explain everything you need to know about the cards. Let's start with the Beast cards. Generally speaking, these will make up the largest portion of your deck. Each beast has a name. This one is Dust Bunny, found here in the center banner of the card. You can tell that Dust Bunny is a beast due to the brown color border, as well as the beast type listed under its name. Pay attention to beast types as you may find synergies here. The center banner is also where you'll find the card's rarity, the card number, and the artist who brought the beast to life. The last detail in the center banner is the summoning cost, found here in the blue star bit shape. I'll explain how summoning works in another video, but what you need to know right now is that Dust Bunny's summoning cost is 1. At the top of the beast card, inside the shield icon, is the beast's power, and it will be used to settle the score in battles between players. Of course, a beast is a whole lot more than just its power. Inside the lower half of the card is the text box, which holds the card effects. Make sure to read them carefully. Below the card effects, you may find flavor text. Flavor text has no bearing on the game, but will give you more information on the beasts you'll encounter and the world they live in. And that's all there is to know about beast cards. Do you have a favorite? Next up are the Grotto cards. Grottos operate similar to beasts in some ways, but are very different in others, so let's check them out. Grottos have their name, card information, and summoning cost in the same places as beast cards. This grotto is named Rumble Ring, and it's very thematic to the lore. In fact, all grottos represent the many different locations across the land. Grottos have a green border, and unlike beasts, they do not have specialized types. They are simply grottos. However, Rumble Ring in particular has a unique distinction. This is an epic card. Epic is used in deck building, and I'll get to that in another video. Beasts, grottos, and wishes all have the potential to be epic. You may have noticed that grottos do not have a power at the top of the card. This means that a grotto cannot attack or defend, but that doesn't mean that they are powerless. Grotto cards have a stronger focus on their card effects in the text box. A grotto that is in play will provide continuous card effects to boost beasts, other grottos, and even the player themselves. Rumble Ring can benefit challengers, which is a very unique effect. So while grottos may seem less flexible than beasts, you can't have the grotto beasts without the grottos. Now the third type of card is the Wish card. If you're an avid player of trading card games, you might already know what they do. Wish cards are your typical action, spell, event style card. They're very useful, and you'll need a few of them in your deck. Wish cards also have a name, their card information, and summoning cost, as well as the type Wish. They have a golden yellow border, and similar to Grotto's, no power at the top of the card. What makes them different is how they're played. While Beast cards have the most options, and Grotto's are game buffs, Wish cards are specialized, one-time use card effects. Looking for extra tempo? Pull out a surprise snack. Want a super powerful beast taken out? Throw a TV at it. Afraid to lose a beast in a dire situation? Give it a way out. Wish cards are a way of making sure that every deck you build has ways to cover its weaknesses and work towards your goals. They're also filled with plenty of Germa references. Can you recognize these? And speaking of Germa, the final card type in the game are the larger-than-life characters, the Challengers. As you can see, their art takes up nearly the entire card, pushing the banner to the top. They have the same type of card information with their Challenger card type. You'll notice that Challengers do not have a summoning cost. This is because Challengers start the game in play, so they're not summoned. Instead, 
challengers join the battle alongside beasts, making them great friends and allies. But that's not all. Challengers also have a goal, listed under their power in a heart shape. In the standard game, each player's goal is 10. However, in the Rumble variant of the game, where challengers are used, each player's goal is based on the goal of their challenger. I will quickly point out that challengers have a text box similar to the other card counterparts, but it looks a little different. But don't worry, the card effects on the challengers work exactly the same way as they would on the other cards. But challengers drastically change the way the game is played to give you a more creative edge in deck building. And there you have it, all four card types all put together that make up the game Grotto Beasts. There's more to learn about the game, so check out the other videos I will be sharing on how to play. Until next time, we'll see you in the ring.